Hey guys, welcome to the 30 Paintings in 30 Days project. Right, if you so. choose to join me on the 30 Paintings in 30 Days journey, I hope that you do share and tag me in posts like on social media and stuff. Maybe film some videos, tag me in the description, something like that. Um, I am um, kind of excited about the project. I do do daily drawing. I don't necessarily do daily painting, but making a daily practice out of something like this encourages you to... Um, get better at it, um, encourages you to work it into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, it also is a way to use up supplies. So if that's your goal, uh, maybe you don't want to do 30 paintings in 30 days, but you want to do 30 collages in 30 days. So that works too. So let me know. Let's get to painting and I'll see you at the end. Hey guys, welcome to painting number 29 in our 30 and 30 series of little watercolor study paintings. We're going to do one more sort of botanical painting. And then for painting number 30, I have an oldie but a goodie. So let's get on to this one. I live next to the woods, for those that don't know. Um, there's 25 feet of woods or more between me and the school actually next to us. And it is um, wild protected land and it is full of wildlife, gigantic pine trees and that are like 800 or plus years old and a lot of mushrooms. There's a tip mushrooms. Okay, so we're going to paint some mushrooms. So of course, as usual, we're going to start light and work our way darker. I am going to start with kind of a wash of Naples yellow. Which isn't going to spread <laughs> the way I usually like my washes to spread because of the paper that we're working on, but we're going to just make it work, right? All right. Then I'm gonna go in with a, let's see. I have this golden brown in the palette. It would be a good color. And I'm gonna suggest the shapes here of the mushroom I see in the background. It's a big shadow under this one. Okay, let's go back to this one. This paper dries so quickly. I guess one of the advantages is I don't have to worry so much about getting the dryer out in between um, layers of paint. I'm gonna to switch to one of my round brushes. These mushrooms are poisonous from what I understand. I don't know what kind they are. I'll show you the picture at the end. Um, they're pretty. I've actually, tr fun fact, I've tried to mold them, make a silicone mold of them. I would love to pour these in resin, but it was an epic failure, so that didn't work. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab some white. This is the titanium white. It needs more water. And the titanium white, at least in this palette, is seems to be more um, transparent than the Chinese white. So I use it to layer where I have to make the colors a little bit lighter, but I still wanna see those colors and marks um, through the paint. Um, so, you know, you just, again, that's why I've said in the videos you wanna do these little studies is to get used to your mediums and to get used to your brushes and your paint and um, don't just paint the same flower over and over again although I guess you could do that but you know try something new um, break out of the box you, I mean it might not turn out to be great but you never know it might be a, a fabulous success so 
Okay, we're gonna just let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna grab some green because there's some greenery around the mushrooms and we are gonna go with, I think the olive green color. I'm not loving the way this is turning out, just FYI. I'm gonna switch back to my big brush. I like my big brush. Okay, I'm gonna go with a darker brown. Let's see, let's try burnt umber. pigment it is challenging with this paper to get it to do what I want because this paper just really starts warping I'm gonna dry that and I'll be back. Okay, we're gonna go with um, some more of one of our light beigey colors. I'm gonna just use this plate. I know it has some green on it, but that's okay. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush in my disgustingly filthy water. I'm gonna grab one of my whites. And then I'm gonna grab some lemon yellow. And I think that'll be kind of maybe the right color. It might not be. I might need to I might need to bust out the tube of N gram white to really get something super opaque and dark. Sometimes getting the paint right out of the tube is like the best thing because you have all that like pure pigment that hasn't been watered down yet. Of course, as mixed media artists, we can also um, use a gel pen or something like that. And you can just like sort of watercolor the background. But I wanna see if I can do this with the paint palette. I'm just dabbing it on. These mushroom tops have um, sort of a really sort of textured top. And I'm alternating between what's on the palette and straight out of the pan. I am trying to choose the titanium white more than the Chinese white because, again, it's more transparent than the other one. And I don't want to completely cover up some of those marks I already made. Constantly switching your eye back and forth between what's on the paper and what's um, in the photo. But at some point, you're intending to do an artistic interpretation of said photo. We are not um, intending to do an exact representation of the photo. So at some point, you probably want to let go of that photo and stop referring to it completely. Otherwise, if you're like me, you just get frustrated with not being able to exactly represent what you see and you get lost in not copying and you forget that you're not trying to copy and you're trying to create a artistic piece um, inspired by that photo. Now you'll notice I just added um, more of the beige cream color and some of the ye lemon yellow 
um, this is like my highlight color because again now right now I'm not really referring to the photo and I am defining my shapes and defining my highlights Hopefully, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to give it another Grab our teeny tiny brush and the golden brown, which is a lighter brown of the ones that are in this palette. I'm going to just use the tip of the brush. Barely on the paper. Just help me refine my shapes would be really fun to do a painting sort of like this with a sort of 70s inspired mushrooms that are like red with polka dots and stuff like that that would be fun Just barely, barely touching the paper. I'm gonna do a teeny bit of blending in a couple of spots. Okay, I'm gonna give that a dry. We are going to go in with our M. Graham white paint, and I'm going to use that stippling brush I've been using, which is by Creative Mark, and it's called an FF, FX FX brush number nine. It's like a short stippling brush. I'm going to go right into the tube. Now, this M. Graham titanium white is a watercolor paint, but it's straight out of the tube, pure pigment, no water, right? And I'm going to just go and make some marks. Do a little bit at a time, and that way if you feel like you've done too much, you can, you know, blend it out with some water. And you'll notice I just dipped it in the tube once, and now I'm just... As I go, again, as I go, I've said this in other videos, the first mark is dark, and then the successive marks are on the lighter side. I'm just trying to make the mushroom cap stand out a little bit more. It's not the best painting I've ever done, but it's not the worst either. It's a fun experiment to see if I could do this. You know on this channel, I don't hide my mistakes from you all. If I screw up, I say so. But your journey with art is about having fun and making mistakes and learning from those mistakes and just enjoying the process. That should be part of it. And there is some advantage if you are gonna get into watercolor to having a combination of tubes and pans. 
this would be one of them. You don't have to have all the colors in tubes, but sometimes it's good to have one or two. All right, I kind of want to add a pop to this. It's kind of like very, the picture is very beige and brown and bland, but so it's turning out that way too. Um, I kind of just want to add a pop. So let's do it. Um, it. What's the worst that could happen? We have this chrome orange here. I'm going to, I don't want to dip. Um, well, maybe I will. I'm going to take that same special effects brush. I'm going to grab some of this chrome orange. Let's see, where's the light coming from in the picture? So I'm looking at where the light is in the picture. And I'm just adding a, like a bunch of, oh, not a bunch. I'm adding some of this orange where the light is hitting these mushroom tops in the photo. It just seemed like it needed a little pop and I wasn't wrong because this orange is doing it for me. There we go. I'm gonna stop now. So that's it, painting number 29. On to the last one. How is that for today's painting? I hope you enjoyed the process. And um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are gonna get the talking version. Here on YouTube, you're just gonna get the speed fruit through version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And, um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye, guys.